Hello. Welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jessie Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please have your notebook ready, your notes, and your textbook so you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for joining me with this lesson. This lesson covers the RN nursing care for spinal cord disorders including back pain, cervical neck pain, spinal cord injury, brain tumors, multiple sclerosis, and ALS. This is just a very quick overview. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss aspects of spinal cord injury, including nursing interventions indicated for patients with injuries at all locations on the cervical spine. You should be able to review the risk, pathophysi pathophysiological changes, and clinical manifestation of spinal cord injury. You should be able to teach patients regarding the nursing and medical management of spinal cord injury and tumors. The RN needs to be aware that back pain is disabling, low back pain, and it is the single greatest cause of injury to employees. The lumbosacral vertebrae and the cervical vertebrae are most commonly affected by back pain. Acute back pain is usually self-limiting, but if the pain is continuing over for over three months or repeated episodes of pain are happening, the patient has chronic back pain. Acute low back pain is caused by muscle strain or spasm or ligament sprain or disc degeneration or herniation of some kind of the nucleus proposis from the center of the spinal disc. Uh, assess pain level in patients with back pain including the nature of the pain and their location. You want to teach this patient's good posture. You want to teach them proper lifting techniques, exercise, and uh, so that they can decrease the risk of further injury in the back. Okay, uh, you want to make sure that to avoid back pain, patient, uh, caregivers, patients, and people know proper body mechanics. Okay, so what they're going to do for back pain as far as diagnostic assessment is going to be a spinal x-ray, an MRI, or a CT to see what's going on. Um, uh, Treatment-wise, is going to be either conservative. Uh, they may do uh, analgesic or NSAIDs or muscle relaxants, heat positioning, physical therapy, and weight control. Uh, suggest heat as an adjunct to medication. Hot showers, baths may also be beneficial. Uh, there's really not a lot of data supporting that heat and cold applications help with uh, low back pain as far as research goes. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about phonophoresis. Phonophoresis is the application of a topical drug like lidocaine, um, uh, followed by continuous ultrasound. Iontophoresis is a similar procedure, which is a small electric current and uh, dexamethasone are usually used. Uh, it is minimally uh, invasive. Um, uh, they may um, do other minimally invasive and open surgical procedures. Uh, as a conservative way, uh, when conservative back pain measures uh, fail, uh, patients with black back pain, as far as you taking care of them, uh, you want to log roll these patients, uh, especially if they've had spinal surgery, you want to teach the patients um, about weight management and obesity and things to avoid strain on um, the vertebral column. Cervical ne neck pain may be coming from uh, a herniated uh, nucleus propulsus in a disc. In acute or chronic cervical neck pain may happen from a muscle strain, um, a ligament sprain, or uh, aging, or poor posture, lifting incorrectly, or a tumor or infection. Um, monitor patients with cervical uh, spinal injuries for manifestations of autonomic dysreflexia, especially acutely. Um, you want to implement interventions um, uh, that limit strain on the cervical spine, uh, especially when you're turning patients uh, or you're transferring the patients. You want to provide emergency care for patients experiencing autonomic dysreflexia. That just makes sense. During uh, cervical fusion, the surgeon usually uh, reduces the fracture that is um, causing problems and then aligns it and then and metal wiring is usually used to secure the bones. Um, 
So the patient may wear a halo vest or uh, some kind of spinal fixation after it is fixed. Your textbook does provide a detailed overview of a spinal cord injury. This is just a brief overview. You should be able to understand the difference between a complete injury where the spinal cord is completely severed and an incomplete injury where the spinal cord uh, functionality or movement or reflex function may be partially uh, or uh, uh, moderately preserved. Uh, but there's swelling on the spinal cord. The four mechanisms that cause trauma to the spinal cord include hyperreflection, hyperflexion, uh, hyperextension, and axial loading or excessive rotations. And uh, this is a, a view of what's going to happen as far as how we're going to classify a patient, whether as a tetraplegic. These two, this is a C4 tetraplegia, which is injury at the C4 level. This is a C6 tetraplegia. They may have some shoulder uh, functionality there. This is T6, and then this is uh, L1 paraplegic, and this is T6 para. Okay, it's going to be important for you to also understand uh, the role of secondary injuries that may worsen a primary injury. Uh, we, the nurse is going to watch the patient for neurogenic shock, autonomic dysreflexia, hemorrhage, ischemia, and fluid and electrolyte imbalances in the acute phases of the spinal cord injury. Also, the textbook goes in further detail about the different cervical injuries and the different ways that um, different syndromes of the spinal cord injury may present, such as anterior cord syndrome, uh, the brown saccard syndrome, and the central cord syndromes. This is going to be important for you to understand. For patients with um, a spinal cord injury, we want to make sure we assess the airway and we mobilize um, the patient, but airway and breathing pattern and circulation status is going to be uh the most important. Okay, the textbook, uh, my notes go in more details about the patient care of a patient with spinal cord injury. It's important that you review this and that you have a good understanding of it. Spinal cord tumors may be primary tumors starting in the actual spinal cord, or they may be secondary tumors that are. Uh, metastasis from uh, a cancer that originated in another part of the body that is now uh, affecting the spinal cord. Uh, the patients with uh, spinal cord tumor pain is uh, often seen as a result of cord compression and um, it can also happen from the infiltration of the spinal tracts and the irritation on the spinal roots. Uh, the patient's going to have routine x-ray or routine imaging such as MRI, uh, to get the detail of the pathological uh, condition that's going on. Primary management of uh, spinal tumors is going to be to remove it if possible, and uh, you might want to refer the patient to the American Cancer Society. This is a picture of a tumor that was being resected. It was an, a, an ependymal tumor. Um, then you see where the tumor is exposed, and this is where the tumor has been removed. Let us now briefly discuss MS, a chronic autoimmune disease that affects the myelin sheath and the conduction pathway in the central nervous system, and it's a leading cause of neurological disability among young people. There's the four, four major types of MS, the relapsing, remitting, the primary progressive, the secondary progressive, and the progressive relapsing MS that I've mentioned there. There is a genetic predisposition uh, for MS, and having a first-degree relative uh, or a sibling with MS increases the patient's risk for developing the disease. Uh, diagnostically, an MRI may be done. They may des demonstrate some plaques that are considered diagnostic for MS. And in your notes there, I've discussed a few meds that are going to be used uh, to treat MS or to slow it down and to decrease the symptoms. And uh, the goal is to be to maintain maximum strength, function, and inter independence on the patient. And we want to make sure that we have made resources for continuity of care and rehab if necessary for the patient. ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease or amyotrophic 
uh, lateral sclerosis is an adult onset upper and lower motor neuron disease characterized by progressive weakness, muscle wasting, spasticity, and it eventually leads to paralysis. There's no known cure for ALS, and we want to monitor the patient's respiratory status, uh, especially in the terminal stages of the disease. And medication management is going to be geared at decreasing pain, fatigue, spasticity, and excessive secretion, sleep disturbances, and complications of the disease. We want to make sure that we help the patient with uh, turning, early ambulation, transferring out of bed, incentive spirometer, and we want to make sure that uh, in the terminal stages we have arranged for a patient to be able to get hospice care at home or have the support from community resources. Thank you for listening into this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed this review of patients with spinal cord disorders. For questions about this lesson or the corresponding notes, please feel free to email me. Have a wonderful day.